Hello all. With this presentation, I want to cover some aspects of the multiple choice questions in physiology. And the objective of this is to help the students to approach the study in order to prepare for different exams that they are likely to have. So I want to present some multiple choice questions that typically appear in some exams. So they have an idea okay, of how to study for them, how to prepare, and how to recognize the best option among the different options offered. So when you study for an exam, okay, it is important to pay attention to what the learning objectives are asking you. So we don't study less or we don't study more. Okay, and make sure that we understand the meaning of these learning objectives. Because in some cases, we only need to remember things. For example, when the objective tells us least mention, sometimes we need to go deeper. That's, for example, when the objective tells us to explain this cause. Sometimes we simply need to understand what is different and what is similar between different things. In that case, the learning objective will tell you contrast, compare. Okay, so it's important to organize the study and know how much time we have to dedicate to each of the topics and also how deep we have to study things. I'm going to present here a couple of learning objectives. Both of them say explain. That means students need to do a deeper study. Okay, it's not just remember the facts. Okay, it's explain the reason for those facts, how they are connected, how they are linked, what produces what. Sometimes there is a chain of events. So the students need to understand what are the different steps, how one event leads to another. Okay, in this case, uh, the student is expected to explain how nerve impulses are generated, transmitted, and discuss the mechanism behind the maintenance of the resting membrane potential. Okay, now going deeper into the same topic, explain the process of generation of action potentials. So all the steps considering the events in the generation, the types of ion channels that are involved, and the importance of the relative and absolute refractory periods and the factors that determine the speed of propagation in the nervous tissue. So what the student needs to know? Of course, it's important to have a basic knowledge of chemistry, physics, okay, that if students don't remember well, it would be a good idea to go back and review some of them. Now, about the neurons, just the basics. Okay, what, are, what is the structure of a neuron? What type of channels are present in different areas? What is the function of each of the components of a neuron? For example, remember that the soma or body is the area that contains the dendrites, that contains receptors for different ligands that can be neurotransmitters, can be any other kind of ligands. Sometimes these receptors are mechanically gated, so respond to a stretch of the membrane, or may respond to hormones, may respond to pH, may respond to different things. Okay, these type of lig uh, channels are called ligand-gated channels, and they will open and allow the entry or exit of different ions. Okay, here we have a special type of potential that is called the receptor or postsynaptic potential. It's a local graded potential that may be hyperpolarizing, so inhibitory, or depolarizing, that means excitatory. This type of potentials uh, can be summated in time or space. In time means that if the neuron is more frequently stimulated, the inhibitory or excitatory effect is going to be stronger. Can be also summated in space. That means that we can that means that we can release signals from different uh, dendrites to different dendrites, and the more dendrites we stimulate at the same time, the larger 
the amount of either hyper or depolarization that we are going to get within the soma. Now, all those signals are going to enter okay, into this area that is the hillock, that is the integrating part of the neuron. This is the area that will accumulate all these ions, okay, either that are either hyperpolarizing or depolarizing the membrane. If the depolarization reaches the threshold for this neuron, in this area, some channels are going to open. Now, the channels that are present here are not ligand gated, are voltage gated channels. They respond to the change in voltage and open only when threshold is reached. This is the area that has the highest concentration of this type of channels. If the threshold is reached, then an action potential will start traveling unidirectionally, only in one direction, and it's going to start opening and closing and producing different cycles of action potentials in these naked areas of the axon that are called the nodes of Rambier. Okay, these action potentials don't occur okay, in the area that we have the myelin or the Schwann cells. And this is important because this helps to speed up the conduction. That's why we say that the action potentials, the conduction in the axon is saltatory, goes from one node to another, to another, to another, to another, okay, until it reaches the axonal end or axon ter terminal. Now, in these areas, in the nodes of Ramier, okay, we have also voltage-gated channels that are for sodium and potassium. Now, once the action potential reaches the axon terminal, there we have other types of channels. Of course, we have also sodium and potassium, but here we have a, a different type of channel, that is the calcium channel that is also voltage-gated. When the action potential reaches this point and depolarizes this area, the calcium channels will open, calcium will enter, increase the depolarization even more, and this will lead to the release of the neurotransmitters from this area into the synaptic cleft. And then this, these neurotransmitters will either excite or inhibit another neuron or will stimulate a muscle or will stimulate a gland in order to do what these structures normally do. Now, there is a basic concept okay, that is essential to remember okay, that inside the cells there is a different composition than in the extracellular space. Okay, in terms of ions, inside the cells there is tons of potassium, while there is very little potassium outside the cells. Sodium is more abundant outside and not so abundant inside. Don't forget that these cations also have their anions. Okay, so when these channels open, okay, there's going to be a movement of the ion from high concentration to low concentration. Okay, now their respective anions will be left behind. Okay, so there, is, there are going to be uh, an anion for every potassium that goes out and another anion here left behind for every sodium that goes inside the cells. In the cells, normally there are more uh, potassium channels than sodium channels, and I'm talking about leaky channels not about these voltage-gated ones. So there is always a lot more potassium moving out than sodium moving in. For this reason and some other reasons, there are, there are always more anions inside the cells than outside. So the charges are negative in the inner side of the membrane and more positive in the outer side. Okay, that's why if you measure the resting membrane potential of a neuron, it is going to be negative generally speaking, in a value of minus 70 millivolts. Okay, that, is, that potential means the difference in electrical potential, be, be potential between the inner and the outer side of the membrane. There is a negative 70 millivolts inside the membrane. And then the student needs to also study all the steps okay, that occur in this action potential starting with the resting membrane, then the depolarization, the overshoot, the peak, the repolarization, and the after hyperpolarization, 
okay, and the reasons for them, and also the situation of the different channels, voltage gated sodium and potassium channels during the resting state, depolarization, repolarization, hyperpolarization, and what explains the absolute and the relative refractory periods. Okay, what is the reason? What is the difference between the sodium and the potassium channels in terms of the velocity of opening and closing and also the gating mechanisms? Notice that the sodium channels, for example, have a double gating mechanism, outer and inner gate, while the potassium channels have only a single gate. Okay, so we are not going to explain this, but when we analyze the questions one by one, we are going to go back to this diagram in order to understand the meaning, the implications, and the importance of this. Okay, here we have some examples of multiple choice questions. And what is important when we approach these questions is, uh, first of all, try to understand well what the question is asking and recognize sometimes we have simple questions like this one, but sometimes we have a more detailed stem in the question, like a vignette or an explanation, but everything can be reduced to a simple question. Okay, then we have four options, sometimes five options, and these options have to be treated like true or false questions. It's like having four true or false questions from which only one is true. Okay, in many cases, there are going to be a couple of options that look likely, that seem possible, and that probably are not, a, or one of them is not totally wrong, but always there is going to be a best option, a preferred answer, and that is what the student has to be able to recognize. Okay, I have here, a, I have written here the questions that you had in the quiz and some others, because I want to show you how the same concept can be asked in different ways. Okay, it's simply changing the question a little bit, but we are asking exactly the same. The question number one says, which of the following ions enters a neuron causing cell membrane depolarization? Okay, it's important to know the concept of depolarization. That means going from negative value and towards less negative or more positive values, so towards the threshold. Okay, what option could be there that could produce the depolarization? Well, normally, of these four options here, the only one that is possible is sodium. Okay, when sodium channels open, sodium will rush inside the cells, making the inner part of the cell less negative, okay? If chloride or bicarbonate enter the cell, the cell is gonna be more negative because these two are anions. Now, if we open potassium channels, remember inside the cells, there is a higher concentration of potassium than outside, so potassium will move out, okay? Potassium is a cation, it has a positive charge, so the inner side of the cell is gonna become more negative, so it's going to move away from threshold, and that, that would be called a hyperpolarization instead of a depolarization. Okay, so here is the correct answer. When we finish today, if we get to cover all the questions, I'm going to upload this PowerPoint so you have access to it. And besides the answers, you will have the explanations. Okay, so you understand why that is the best option. So then we have another question. This is not, a, there are some questions here that are not in the quiz, but they ask exactly the same. For example, this question, okay, is asking exactly the same thing. Instead of asking which ion, now the question asks the opening of which of the following channels will most likely produce depolarization in a cell. Okay, instead of asking you which ion is asking opening of which of the following ions, uh, channel ions, will depolarize the cell. And the answer is exactly the same. 
Now, this is a question that will ask exactly the same concept, but it's a bit more complex, okay? Instead of asking a plain question, this is telling you that a researcher is investigating the effect of a drug, a medication, and when adding the drug to a sample of nervous tissue, okay, they know that the electrical, electrical signal of the voltmeter moves from negative 70 to positive 30. That means it's producing a depolarization. Okay, which of the following is the mechanism of action of this drug? opening potassium or opening sodium channels, inactivating potassium channels or inactivating sodium channels. Okay, so notice that this is asking exactly the same. When you open sodium channels, sodium will move in and the, action, and the membrane potential will go from the resting membrane potential passing through all the negative, negative to the positive values and reaching the peak of the action potential at positive 30 millivolts. Okay, but what I want you to notice is that just knowing the concept, what is depolarization, what channels are present in the membrane, what happens when they open, and, the, and this what happens when they open depends on the difference in concentration of ions at both sides of the membrane. Just this basic concept of potassium is more abundant inside the cells and sodium more abundant outside the cells gives you the idea because these ions will always move from high concentration to low concentration okay when the channels are open for them okay so in this case is exactly the same thing as we saw in the previous question again uh, the same explanation that appears before okay is valid for all of these concepts now notice that in this case instead of asking for the uh, depolarization okay um, yeah instead of asking for the depolarization this question is asking for the hyperpolarization also known as after hyperpolarization, but it's the same, okay? This is the same researcher doing exactly the same experiment, but now when they add the drug, okay, they note that the membrane potential goes from negative 70 to negative 90, so it's more negative, moving away from the threshold. That's called hyperpolarization. Okay, so there are more negative charges inside the cells than at the beginning. How will that happen? Well, there are four options, opening potassium or sodium channels, opening water channels, and opening calcium channels. Let's start from the last. Okay, if we open calcium channels, normally what happens is that calcium, that is more abundant, inside in the extracellular space and in the sarcoplasmic reticulum for example in the muscle cell what will happen is that we are going to have more positive charges so this is supposed to depolarize become less negative if we open water channels that that is not going to affect the charges too much now opening potassium or sodium channels, we already know that sodium channels produce depolarization. So the only possible answer here is opening potassium channels. Potassium, which is more abundant inside the cells, will move out. Potassium is a cation. So we are going to have less negative, uh, sorry, positive charges inside the cells. So the inner side of the membrane is going to go to a more negative value, hyperpolarization of the membrane. Now, related question to what we were speaking before, opening of which of the following will most likely lead to repolarization? Well, this is exactly a very simple way of asking you exactly what we were asking before in the question four, 
Okay, but instead of using the researcher, the values, etc., we are simply giving you a plain question. Opening what channel leads to repolarization. Okay, we already saw that potassium channels opening produces the repolaris. No, oh, I'm sorry. The previous question was hyperpolarization. Well, this is exactly a, a similar concept. Remember, repolarization. And let me clarify this here. So. Let's say this is the resting membrane potential. When sodium channels open, the membrane depolarizes. Depolarizes when sodium moves inside the cells. Then there is a peak here. And then we have the repolarization phase. Okay, that is that occurs because potassium is moving out of the cells. Okay, so we have less positive charges is moving towards the negative value. And then we have the hyperpolarization here, okay, in which the membrane goes from minus 70, which is the resting membrane potential, to minus 80. And this occurs, remember, because the potassium channels close very slowly. Okay, so they open slowly and they close very slowly, so there is time to make the inner membrane even more negative than it was at the beginning. Okay, so the answer there is also potassium. It's responsible for both the repolarization and the after hyperpolarization. There you, there you have it here, the explanation. Now, the question six is pure memory, okay? There are many questions in physiology that we can answer by analyzing, by connecting concepts, by connecting or linking different ideas, but sometimes it's simply that we have to remember. For example, which of the following regions of a neuron has the highest density of voltage-gated sodium channels? Okay, and that is simply a question that is memory, but Remembering the dendrites, we don't have voltage-gated channels. We have ligand-gated channels where the neurotransmitters bind. We could have also mechanically-gated channels that respond to stretch. The same type of channels are present in the soma. Now, in the axon hillock and in the axon terminal, we do have voltage-gated channels but in the axon terminal, what is important to remember is that there are, besides the sodium gated, uh, voltage gated channels, we have calcium voltage gated channels. Okay, and the region that has the highest concentration of this type of channels is the HELOC, which is the part of the axon that accumulates, summates, integrates all of these impulses that come from the different dendrites and initiates or triggers the action potential. Okay, so axon hillock is the correct answer there. There you have the explanation that you can read later when I upload this. And please, when I I'm answering this and later when I upload the PowerPoint, try to grade yourselves, okay? What is the answer that you gave to these questions and which questions you had right, with which questions you had wrong, and they try to understand why you didn't answer correctly one of them. And I invite you to email me or to uh, send me a message, okay, so we can discuss this. Or if you want, uh, during the next encounter on, on Wednesday, we also can discuss any of these concepts if you think they need to be explained again. Question seven uh, requires memory, okay, but also application of concepts. So here we have a combination. Okay, This is a researcher trying to investigate the effects of a new drug on the nerve conduction. There is an electrode in the soma of a neuron and another in the middle of the axon and another in the axon terminal. When adding the drug, 
they note that there is an increase in the electrical signals towards the depolarization in the electrode on the axon terminal, but there is no electrical activity on either of the other electrodes. Which of the following is the most likely target of the drug used in this experiment? As I said before, the most important difference in the channels that we have in the in the axon terminal okay, is the presence of voltage-gated calcium channels. And I just realized that I made a mistake here. Okay, because there are no ligand gated calcium channels there. There should say voltage gated calcium channels. Okay, so if we have a drug that only stimulates the axonal end because of this depolarization notice there and doesn't stimulate either the dendrites or the axon, okay, we have to choose ligand gated calcium channels as the correct, sorry, voltage gated calcium channels as the correct option. This is the explanation, exactly what I said before. Question eight, voltage gated sodium channels are inactivated upon reaching which of the following states? And for this, you simply have to study this diagram that explains the different states of the action potential. We start with depolarization, peak repolarization, and hyperpolarization. What happens when we have an inner membrane potential of plus 30? Okay. At that point, this plus 30 millivolts will produce the inactivation of the sodium channels. Remember that this inactivation means the inner gate is the one that is closed. The outer gate is not, but sodium cannot go inside. And we have here also the opening of the potassium channel. So potassium starts moving out. Okay, so the correct answer here is during the overshoot. Question nine, voltage gated sodium channels open upon reaching which of the following states? Okay, we said before that the sodium channels are inactivated at the peak. Okay, this is the beginning of the absolute refractory period. Okay, this inner gate closure doesn't allow that any other stimulus can trigger an action potential. Okay, these sodium channels will remain inactive all the way down, but once the cell reaches the resting membrane potential and enters into the undershoot, or in the hyperpolarization, at that point, the sodium channels will open again. Okay, and that's when we uh, enter into the relative refractory period. Okay, what happens is that now this membrane potential is so low, so far away from threshold that the cell needs a huge stimulus in order to initiate a, a new action potential. That's why this refractory period is called relative. Okay. There you have the explanation for the question, uh, questions eight and nine. Question 10, voltage gated potassium channels open upon reaching which of the following states? We already mentioned that. Remember these channels will open exactly at the same time that the sodium channels get inactivated. That's why we have the inflection from going up to going down, inactivation of sodium, opening of potassium. And which of the following is required to open a ligand gated ion channel? Okay, this is a question that simply asks you if you know what is a ligand. Okay, reaching threshold. 
mm, I don't think that is a good idea because reaching threshold, what, tri what triggers is an action potential. It doesn't open any ligand gated channel. It opens voltage gated channels because threshold is a measure of electricity, voltage. Then we have binding of a molecule that sounds better because a ligand is a molecule. But let me take a look at the other two. Reaching overshoot, well, I think that overshoot is another measure of voltage. So that is a voltage that will open voltage gated channels. Binding of sodium. Hmm. Sodium, I don't think sodium binds to any channel. Sodium enters through the channels when they are open because either a ligand was, is, is bound there or the channel opened in response to a voltage change. Okay, so the best option there is the binding of a molecule. There is the explanation and question 12. Okay, we have a series of voltages as, as the different options. Which of the following voltages would most likely be measured during the relative refractory period? And as I explained before, the relative refractory period corresponds to this period of undershoot. If we remember, the resting membrane potential is negative 70. So we have to look for a value that is below 70. And that is minus 80 millivolts. Question 13. Which of the following is most accurate regarding the repolarization phase of the action potential? Repolarization. So remember our diagram, depolarization, repolarization, undershoot. What is true about this part? Sodium channels are closed and potassium channels are closed. I don't think that will produce any change in this slope. Would produce a straight line. Sodium channels are open and potassium channels are closed. I don't think that is correct because if sodium channels are open, we are gonna go up, not down. Sodium channels are inactive. That means nothing is moving through and potassium channels are open. That makes more sense because if sodium is not going in and potassium is moving out, that line is gonna go towards the negative values sodium channels close and potassium channels inactive that's either that's very similar to the one above doesn't matter if, if they are close or inactive nothing is moving through and besides these potassium channels cannot be inactive because they don't have the double gating so this question this option here is a nonsense so that's the correct answer and the last question of this presentation is, which of the following axons will most likely exhibit fastest, oh my goodness, fastest conduction velocity? That is simply a memory question. Okay, it's asking a concept, but something that has to be remembered. And that's not hard to remember, large axons, large diameter offers less resistance to currents like the highway compared to a street and if they are myelinated the conduction is going to be fastest because this action potential will, will move from one node of Rambier to the other one and to the other one doing this saltatory conduction instead of having to go one by one through all the ion channels of the axon. Okay, and thick myelinated axon is the correct answer there. Okay, that's the way this works. Okay, I'm gonna blow 